Bună ziua! Sunt Raluca Brihan, bine v-am găsit la întâlnirile Hot News. Instituțiile europene se află într-un moment important al negocierilor în ceea ce privește bugetul Uniunii pentru următorii șapte ani. Dar probabil și mai important în acest moment sunt discuțiile legate de bugetul pentru planul de redresare din situația creată de pandemie. Iar în tot acest context apar amenințări de blocare a bugetului. Pentru a discuta despre aceste subiecte importante, îi avem astăzi invitați de la distanță pe europarlamentarii Manfred Weber și Sigrid Mureșan. Thank you for accepting to join the discussion. For the beginning, let's talk about the state of the negotiation on the long-term EU budget and the most important about the recovery and resilience facility. Mr. Weber, please. Well, the outcome of the July uh, Council meeting uh, was a great success. So Europe showed solidarity, especially in Corona times, when we are facing a big economic crisis ahead of us. And although for the long term financing for the European Union, we found an agreement. Now we at the European Parliament as the place to discuss about budgetary priorities for the future of Europe. We still have a, a few points on the agenda, for example, to strengthen the future orientation of the budget, more money for research, more money in fight against uh, uh, Corona and cancer in the health program. And we want to strengthen all the, the border protection uh, with uh, strengthening our Frontex as an organization. So that are the priorities we still have in mind. And we did it now. We have a good outcome now. Finally, with the German presidency, the European Parliament found a common understanding how to progress. So we are in front of a good deal for the future of Europe. Mr. Mureșan, where is Romania on this state of this negotiation? The truth is that, as Chairman Weber said, as a consequence of Corona, the European Union is launching the biggest economic recovery plan that it has ever launched, 750 billion euros. This together with the traditional budget of the European Union, means that all member states of the Union will receive in the next years more funds than ever, and this also applies to, to Romania. Uh, for Romania, in July, in the European Council, President Klaus Johannes managed to negotiate almost 80 billion euros for the next seven years from the EU budget and from the re uh, recovery and resilience facility together. The good news is that the European Parliament is supporting these amounts. The agreement reached on the MFF is not questioning, it is not challenging the amounts obtained by each head of state and government. And on the recovery and resilience facility, just this week, yesterday, the European Parliament voted in the budget and in the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee its mandate for the final negotiations with the Council and it supports the exact amount and the allocation criteria as decided by the European Council. So the amounts negotiated by the Prime Ministers and Presidents of all Member States of July are secured exactly as they were negotiated. But we, the European Parliament, wanted to achieve a bit more in some areas which are of a common European interest, good for the future of the European Union, and here it's also good for every uh, member state individually. And here we have managed to achieve in the negotiations with the Council more funds for research, more funds for border control, very important also for Romania because we are securing the external border of the European Union, to Serbia, to Ukraine, to the Republic of Moldova, to the Black Sea. So the support there will be very important. More money for uh, the rights and values program, so for the values of the European Union amongst other programs. So these are clear achievements of the European Parliament, which are good for the EU as a whole. They are good for the member states individually as well, and for Romania. So some challenges uh, arose, if I may call them challenges. We saw the other day that Hungary threatens EU budget veto over rule of law. How do you comment on this? But firstly, what is this new mechanism, the rule of law, which are the cases in which it applies? And what arose the disagreement of countries such as Hungary? The rule of law sounds probably a little bit too technical. We have to speak about the independence of our judiciary. We have to speak about the freedom of our media, that our journalists can do their proper job. 
uh, to fight against corruption, an extremely important issue for the whole European Union. And these are the aspects we have in mind when we as parliamentarians, as People's Party, uh, we fought for such a binding rule of law mechanism for the next five years. And the mechanism is quite clear. We will not spend the taxpayers' money of uh, Europe uh, to member states who are not capable to secure this basic principles of our European way of life. And that is the first time we achieved this. I would even call it an historic agreement that we managed to link the money to the binding mechanism of rule of law and the principles behind. And I th I'm sure that a lot of people all over Europe, the overwhelming majority of citizens in Romania, in my home country, in Germany, in France, in Spain, everywhere in Europe, people expect that we are managing our funds, that we are governing our countries and the European Union on the base of rule of law on these basic principles. And that's why Europe stood up. Europe managed now to find an agreement that we link money to these basic principles and we can guarantee the principles in a much better way for the future. Mr. Mureshan, how do you comment on Hungary's position? And please tell us more about this rule of law mechanism. Look, as we were seeing before, the European Union will allocate more money in the next years for the beneficiaries than ever before. And it's clear that the bigger the budget is, the more money we spend, the more we need to make sure that money really reaches the people. And uh, a government which is threatening the European values, which is threatening the independence of the judiciary, which is not fighting corruption uh, in a proper way, which is not ensuring the independence of key institutions of the state, freedom of the press, as Manfred Weber just said, should not receive uh, uh, should not receive support from EU funds. This has always been the position of the uh, group of the European People's Party, the largest group in the European Parliament. It has always been also the position of the National Liberal Party in Romania, our party, the largest party with the DPP, and also myself. We have always voted in the European Parliament to make this correlation. And with the European Parliament, since the beginning of 2019, asked for this. Big support from the EPP group in a vote on a legislative proposal from the Commission. And as I said, ourselves, as members of the Parliament from the National Liberal Party, also voted in favor. Then, the member states. The 27 member states could not agree on a common position. This is why the file was blocked. But now, fortunately, they could agree on a common position and negotiations between the parliament and the member states took place and there is an agreement. So the message is clear from the 1st of January 2021. All EU funds, both from the traditional budget and from the new recovery fund, will be linked to the, uh, to the rule of law. Uh, governments have to respect uh, the rule of law, the independence of the judiciary in order to access these funds. And this applies to all governments equally. You have just mentioned a member state before. Um, we have also seen in our country in the past uh, politicians uh, who were questioning the independence of the judiciary. Obviously not the case now anymore. So what I want to say very clear is that all politicians who defend the independence of the judiciary will always support such a mechanism. If you will hear a politician speak out against such a mechanism, it's a clear sign that he, um, he plans to affect the independence of the judiciary uh, uh, the well-functioning of, uh, of its institutions. We as EPP have always defended this. We believe it's the right mechanism. It will enter into force on the 1st of January 2021. And it's primarily in the interest of uh, the beneficiaries of EU funds. And one very important thing secured by the parliament throughout the negotiations is the following. If a government does bad things on the rule of law and the European Union might need, the European Commission might need to suspend payments of EU funds, then the final beneficiaries should not be affected. The government needs to pay the bills to the final beneficiaries. So if you're planning to build a highway uh, as a government, if you're breaching the rule of law, the highway should still be built and the government should pay for it from public money. It's very important that the final beneficiaries, the people, the farmers, the local communities, the local communes, they will not suffer due to what the parliament has secured in these negotiations if a government is breaching the rule of law. The sanction should always hit those who breach the rule of law, and that is, you know, irresponsible governments, the final beneficiaries, 
shall not and will not suffer the consequences. Thank you. Though, Mr. Weber, uh, how these differences, uh, differences uh, can be solved? Uh, could these differences postpone the adoption of the budget? As an please. So this week is the week of uh, compromise. Uh, I think last uh, the last days were very positive. So we have a real momentum among the national level, so the council level and the European Parliament to solve the questions now. Uh, and hopefully um, uh, the uh, the message from uh, Viktor Orban will not be his final his final message, because Europe needs the money. Europe needs financial. Uh, uh, safety and certainty for the next upcoming years. We must invest now to back and to support our businesses, especially the small and medium sized companies, those who are the base and the backbone of our economy in Europe, in Romania, but also in the rest of Europe. They need certainty. And the big signal is that Europe is on your side. So Europe is investing and in even increasing the investments in, in Europe. Another element is important for us that we are focusing not only in stabilizing the economy in the Corona crisis, but also bringing a fresh, uh, fresh uh, uh, kickoff uh, towards the modern forms of economy. That's why the investment in uh, in the uh, in the question of uh, data, uh, the digital investments, and all of the investments into climate change, which brings us finally new products and better living conditions uh, in Europe. That are good investments for the future. So what we have to do is to use the money we have now in our hands for real future investments, because the global competition with China and also with America, even with Biden in, in the office, uh, will be more challenging for us as Europeans. And I'm sure we only can win this competition on global level if we combine our forces and we stick together. Mr. Murashan, how will Romania be allowed to use those 30 billion euros from the recovery fund? It is clear that there will be no way to the um, economy before Corona. We as citizens have adapted our behavior. We are now doing this interview in a digital way with you. And I think that we of us, we are placed now in three different cities in Europe. We would not have thought maybe about doing this like this before Corona. It's clear that people are changing their behavior we are consuming more of some goods and services and less of some others we are consuming more digital products for example and this is why the money from the recovery and resilience facility should go into modernizing our economy helping those in need uh, but also modernizing our economy helping those in need means helping the enterprises which were affected it means also help the public sector, for example, uh, through modernizing, enlarging the, its medical uh, capabilities, modernizing hospitals, investing in new technology, modern technology hospitals. So help those in need, but also modernize the economy, make it more digital, make it uh, greener, improve the infrastructure in a sustainable way where it still needs to be improved. The European Parliament proposes for the recovery and resilience facility six pillars, six directions into which money should flow. Firstly, it's greening. Secondly, it's digital. Thirdly, it's economic cohesion. And here, there will be um, amounts foreseen for industry, for small and medium-sized enterprises, which ourselves as center-right parties have always fought for, have always backed. Then the fourth pillar, social cohesion, because there are categories of people, including elderly people, including children, to face the risk of poverty and we should help them in this fight. Number five, institutional resilience. Money for public institutions, about which we saw during the corona crisis that they need to be enlarged, modernized, and here the help for hospitals is needed. And number six, the money for to help young people in a way in which they do not become the victim of the pandemic. So their education system has to be modernized, um, adapted. These are the six directions into which uh, the European Parliament would want to see the, uh, the money flow in a clear cooperation with, uh, with the private sector because the economic development and the uh, job creation process is taking place in the, uh, in the private sector, primarily in the SMEs. This is why the view of the ECB group is to clearly put a focus on SMEs, uh, helping SMEs uh, from, uh, from this recovery and Mr. Weber, you mentioned earlier the US election. 
What is your perspective on the outcome of the US election and what will be the impact of the US election on the US-Europe relationship? First of all, we have to wait for the for the real final con confirmation of the whole process. And I fully trust in the American institutions. They don't need any kind of lessons from us in Europe about democracies. They know how to manage this, even even with some some critical statements from Donald Trump. But they will manage it. I'm sure about this. And then it's very likely that we can continue the cooperation between Europe and America with uh, Joe Biden. And he's a very experienced uh, politician. He knows how important the transatlantic cooperation is. And uh, that's why we will have a partner in the future who is uh, who is a, a partner for us, who wants to be constructive, who wants to make uh, a deal with us and who fully understands that our big challenges of today, Corona, fight against climate change or the competition with China can only be solved if we work on this transatlantic uh, uh, cooperation in a positive way together. That is his understanding. And that's why the culture, the style, the way how we do politics will change fundamentally. And that is in the interest of Europe. But on the other hand, I want to underline that this means not that the big brother in America is back and we are simply uh, can continue like before. I think that will not happen. I think we have to create more European sovereignty. We have to work for a Europe which is which is on the same level like the United States, which is guaranteed the same influence and economic strength like the Americans have. Uh, and that means to strengthen the European single market. That means to establish a European uh, military defense pillar for Europe together with the member states. And that means also, especially in the digital field, to create a digital sovereignty for Europe, that we are not so much depending on American or Chinese companies when we speak about the digital area era in front of us. So that are the points which where we have to stand up, where we have to be more confident in ourselves and, 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 and really create this kind of European sovereignty. So we will have a good partner, but that means also more responsibility for Europe as a whole. Thank you. Mr. Murashan, if you want to add your position on the U.S. election. Uh, I clearly agree with Chairman Weber. Uh, it's clear that in the last years, the agenda in Washington and the agenda of ourselves in the European Union, these agendas have differed. Uh, we should not forget that four years ago, when President Trump came into office, we were negotiating with the United States a free trade agreement. President Trump, we were getting ready to make progress there. President Trump came into office and said, stop. We have agreed um, to tackle climate change, which is something which happens. Uh, just a very few minority of people do not believe in that, but there is so overwhelming scientific evidence that man-made climate change is happening. We were agreeing on agenda. Um, in Paris, uh, we have made commitments on how to uh, reduce pollution. And then President Trump came and unfortunately he said, look, the United States is not participating into, uh, into this anymore. In foreign policy, we also did very many things together between the United States and the European Union in the, in the years before. And uh, now in these four years, the agendas were different. And this uh, was bad news for the member states of the European Union. It was bad news also for Romania, because we are a committed member state of the European Union. Most benefits in terms of the you no know, value of the economy derived from our uh, membership in the European Union. We are a member of NATO and the security of Europe and of our member states so far since the end of the World War II was based primarily you know, in our membership in NATO and in our partnership with the United States. So EU member states, Romania included, we were in the EU, we were in NATO, and uh, we also had traditionally a good and important relationship with the United States of America. And the fact that in the last four years, the transatlantic relationship was more tense, this was bad news for the member states of the European Union. And uh, we are obviously looking forward to uh, more cooperation between the two sides of the Atlantic. But exactly as Chairman Weber said, and I would like to explicitly agree here, we as the European Union and as member states of the EU have to become stronger ourselves. The economy has to become stronger. We have to make the most of our economic potential, 450 million citizens. We are the biggest um, single market, the biggest economy, the 27 member states taken together. 
worldwide. So we need to make the most of our economic power. We need to reform. We need to make sure that our economy is modern, can thrive in a digital um, in a digital economy. In terms of security, yes, NATO very important. Yes, partnership with the uh, with the um, uh, United States very very important in terms of security. As I said, it was the guarantor of the security of uh, Europe since the end of World War II. But obviously, there are things which we can do more and better amongst EU member states as well, together with NATO, not in contradiction with our NATO membership, but together with uh, with NATO. So in this, you know, uh, um, global competition with the United States, with China, uh, we can we can only strive if we're strong. And one very important thing, if we are united, and uh, we have seen in the negotiations on Brexit that 27 member states of the Union in very complicated negotiations have a common agenda, they stay united, and I'm sure this is what we will also do in the, in the future, in the future transatlantic relations. We should not expect miracles overnight, um, but uh, we can be confident that the relation will be closer and better, but we as Europe should know exactly what we want and speak with one voice as well. Thank you. In the end, if you if you have any messages for Romanian citizens and EU citizens about all these concerns uh, brought by the pandemic. So my main message is that united we are much stronger than being alone. And that is my main message. For example, today we sign the first contract now with uh, the uh, company who is providing us with vaccines in the future, in the next years. So a German company together with an American company and we Europeans have secured for all Europeans, not only for Germans, for French, for Spaniards. So for Romanians, for Bulgarians, for all Europeans, the same access to this vaccine. And that is a major success for us. And that gives you a clear indication that together we are much stronger than alone. And that is the whole message uh, behind Europe. And in tomorrow's world, we have to be more united, even more united than today, because otherwise we will lose our European way of life, the strength to defend our European way of life. And if I may, to add a second point, having the American development in mind, the EPP uh, in Romania, Ludovic Orban and President Johannes, uh, they managed to keep a political approach of deciding things from the center so being not extreme in one way or the other following not a populistic approach like we saw it in other countries of the european union because only the center only a balanced approach from the center of the political landscape guarantees finally good results for the citizens economically from a health point of view in corona times and also for our environment and our security and that is the good and wise approach that's why uh, we should continue to do so. Is the People's Party in Europe to follow this approach to define our political strategy from the center? Thank you. Mr. Murashan. Look, you asked about the role of the European Union in overcoming this pandemic. One thing is clear since the very beginning of the pandemic, the European Union has helped those people affected. The patients affected by Corona in one member state were treated in another member state. The European Union provided equipment, vaccines, ventilators to, uh, to the countries in biggest need, common European acquisitions to face, common European reserves of medical equipment were created. We have allowed to, um, to use EU funds during the crisis where they were most needed, so more flexibility. Uh, people who, for example, uh, received um, um, unemployment benefits, the um, also benefits for part-time working in Romania. Um, uh, they should know that part of the money was coming from the European Union because the European Union said one can use the money for this and the government of Romania put forward programs to attract the money. And this also happened in many other EU member states that uh, the help from the European Union was concrete and made a difference on the ground. We are now working to um, help also in the medium term. And the negotiations on the budget of the European Union are uh, successfully being concluded these days. And the negotiations on the uh, 750 billion euros EU recovery package will be successfully concluded within the, next, uh, within the next weeks. And as Chairman Weber said, the vaccine is also coming with big European contributions. 
this is something very important because we all know the most likely end of the pandemic will be through a vaccine. So European companies with EU money are researching and uh, finding a vaccine which will be made available to the people all, all over Europe. This is what is happening and this is exactly what the EU um, should be about and it is about and it's the most concrete form uh, for help to uh, people in, uh, in Europe in these times. Thank you.